Good morning, everyone. This is Sarah with Posh Pooch Designs. Now, I have this sign sitting out here that says, Save the Tatas, because it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And I want you to remember to do your breast exam and go to the doctor, get your mammograms, because saving your Tatas is very important. Well, good morning. This is Sarah with Posh Pooch Designs. Scoot over just a minute so I'm a little more centered. This is our live video chat. And today's video chat, we're going to be talking about what is the best yarns to use for dishcloths and washcloths, table runners, placemats, anything that you use in the kitchen and possibly the bathroom. Good morning, Dawn. Yes, somebody asked me last week, what does it mean to clink in? And so what that means is it lets me know you're here and you take your coffee cup and you clink just like you would a wine glass or a cup of something that you want to say hello. Yay, we're here. So again, if you'll notice, I'm wearing my breast cancer awareness shirt and my breast cancer awareness hat because breast cancer awareness is very important. All right, so let's get started in our conversation. Now, just in case you don't know, every Tuesday, good morning, Missy, good morning, Kelly, glad to see you. I was a little worried because I hadn't seen any comments popping through. Well, anyway, um, I totally lost my train of thought. <laughs> Okie dokie, let's get back to our conversation. We're talking today about washcloths, dishcloths, table runners, and I've got a whole list, hot pads of things that we use in the kitchen. Good morning, Jeanette and Sharon. Uh, wanting to know what kind of yarns that you use to make these things. And I've gotten a lot of questions about this lately, and it was really interesting because I hadn't gotten any in a while, and then all of a sudden I started getting them. And let me just talk to you a little bit about a few different kinds of yarns that I like to use. I'm going to pull these up here so you can see. I'm going to switch over to my other cam here. Now on my cam here, I've got Red Heart Scrubby. I've got I Love This Cotton. That's from Hobby Lobby. I've got uh, Crafter's Secret Cotton. That's also from Hobby Lobby. Of course, I've got Sugar and Cream. And these are all basic yarns that you can use. Now, the reason that um, I got this question, the first question I got was, can I use cotton and acrylic together? And before you yell, no, 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 you should never use those together. Or you should never use cotton or you should never use acrylic, you know, because everyone has their own opinion. Let's talk about it a little bit. So the first I want to talk to you about is when you're making a washcloth for your face, okay? I like to use these small little washcloths, just like this, little variegated yellow. I like to use these to wash my face, to remove my makeup. I also use these on the dogs occasionally before their eyes, although I have some smaller ones that I do use. And I like to use these, but sometimes the sugar and cream or peaches and cream can be a little bit rough for your face. And so I like to make them out of this, which is Red Heart, I'm sorry, Hobby Lobby, I love this cotton. And it's a very soft cotton. Now you can use any cottons that you choose for this, but just remember, if you're going to use it on your face or your child's face or body for that matter, you don't want it to be too rough on your skin. So keep that in mind. Now, I do have a friend who prefers acrylic yarn for their face wash cloths. And she says she prefers that because it has a little bit of abras abrasive to it. And something that you can do if you want to make a cotton one, and then you can make an acrylic one, stitch them together and you can use the soft side on your face and if you want to use that abrasive side say you got a little pimple or something then that would be fine too just remember to be careful because those abrasive ones can really be harmful to your skin good morning trish good morning is it fotini oh i just love it when people have fun names uh, one, of, one of the things that i love to do it sounds silly but i love to go through the baby name book and just read baby names they're so much fun Anyway, I'm glad that you're here. Okay, so that's what you would use if you were doing a face cloth. Now, if you're going to use a cloth to do the dishes, that's a whole different story. 
And I do have people that prefer these. And if you look at that close, that's a scrubby made with the Red Heart scrubby yarn. Now Red Heart has an acrylic and they also have a cotton. I didn't care for the cotton because I found it to be just a little bit too scratchy, but also it didn't have any stretch at all. And this acrylic one has just a tinge of stretch, and so I like that. And you can make one like this, that's just a circle or square, whatever shape that you want. And um, they work great for doing the dishes, getting those pots and pans clean. And also, the reason I like these is they don't hold the moisture. If you use just a cotton to scrub your dishes, that's totally fine. And I do that sometimes cleaning out the glasses and stuff. But cotton absorbs everything and it will get mildewy and stinky. And you need to wash those in hot water so that you can get that stink out and dry them on high with your other towels. Because, oh, there's nothing nastier than walking in your kitchen and it's got that mildewy stinky. So you have to be careful using this cotton because all of these cottons... They absorb that smell. They absorb, you know, the smells if you're doing like chicken or ham or something and the juice gets in there. Oh my goodness, ah, nasty. So make sure if you use this kind, you wash it in hot water. Now, something you can do, and I've got this one here. This is just a little paw shape one that I did. And if you look close, you can see that I have the scrubby yarn and I have the cotton yarn. And I used one strand of each and I crocheted them together in a circle and then I just added the little paws for fun. And these are perfect in my opinion because you're getting the absorbency of the cotton and you're getting the scrubby of the scrubby yarn. And so I really, really like these. I <laughs> These are great in the bathroom. If you take one of these and make a little string on it, you can hook it on the sink where you brush your teeth and then when you're all done brushing your teeth, you just scrub out that sink because I don't know about you, but when I brush my teeth, I spit. <laughs> and that toothpaste gets stuck on everything. Or if you rinse out your mouth and you spit in the sink, it gets stuck on everything. Whoops, let me put my phone on silent. We don't want to hear that. There we go. Sorry about that. Anyway, and if you, you can do this in the bathtub too. You can hook a little string and then when your child or you get out of the bathtub, just run that scrubby like this just around the edge of that tub and you'll get that ring up just like nothing so and that's this is my favorite way to make them is to use one strand of cotton and one strand of the scrubby yarn perfect okay so so that's if you're going to do the dishes or clean the bathtub so what if you want to do a placemat or a runner well my opinion is hello sandra thanks for tuning in Oh, can hear you. Good. <laughs> well, um, if you're going to make a placemat that you're just going to use to protect your table, one of the questions that she asked me is, can I use acrylic? And I think that it would be okay to use acrylic if you're just making a placemat. Keep in mind, though, if you're going to set something hot, you don't want to use acrylic. Acrylic is like putting uh, plastic down. And as soon as that hot pot hits it, it will burn that acrylic placemat or hot pad or whatever, but it can also burn you. It's like melted hot plastic. So you don't ever, ever, ever want to make a placemat or a, a hot pad or a cover for a handle or any of those things in the kitchen that are going to touch anything hot. Like I said, acrylic melts and it melts really easy. And I sort of learned that the hard way many years ago before I was really crocheting very much and I was just learning, I think it was like 16 or 17. And my mom had a kettle of tea sitting on the stove and we had a gas range and it was nice and hot. Well, I picked that tea kettle up and I set it on just a fun little hot pad that I made and it was, of course, acrylic. I didn't know. And I set it on there. And you could just smell that burnt plastic, that burnt acrylic smell. Oh, it was horrible. And then when I moved it, of course, the and put it onto a regular hot pad, that was a mess. And I was so glad because it can burn through and it can ruin your countertops depending on what your countertop is made out of. So be really, really careful about that, okay? Now, if you're going to make a hot pad and say it's just for decoration to hang up, I think that would be okay. I have some that look like coffee cups. 
And my whole kitchen is done in coffee cup style because, you know, I love my coffee. <laughs> But make sure people who use your kitchen understand the difference between ones that are for decoration and ones that are for use. And what I do is the ones that are for use go in the drawer. Where all of those things go, they can pull out the drawer and get what they need. If they're hanging up on the wall somewhere, they're decoration. Don't use them. Now I have pulled them down for fun. My granddaughter, um, I got uh, given to me a neat little tykes kitchen set it's out on my back deck and i will use my pretend uh, acrylic hot pads and things like that for us to pretend out in her kitchen you know because i'm trying to teach her that pots are hot and let's pretend to use a hot pad or whatever but just remember acrylic burns really 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 easily and has no place around anything that's going to be hot now uh back to the placemat and table runner thing to me, the purpose of the placemat or the table runner is to protect the table from the scratching of glasses or the scratching of plates, or if you spill something, it goes right on there. And I, so I think that, you know, if you want to make them out of cotton, that's perfect. But if you want to make them out of acrylic, that's great too. Just make sure that when you're using something hot, you put a, a, a proper hot pad down even if it's on top of that acrylic. Now I tried to um, double my acrylic hot pads thinking it would, like I made two layers thinking that it would make it better. It just burned right through both of them. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> so anyway, I mean, th the best way to learn is trial and error, of course, but if you can learn without having to go through that, that's better too, right? <laughs> so just to bottom line it for you, cotton yarn, when it comes to your face and your uh, body, you know, your dishes is perfect. I mean, lots of people like to make their own dishcloths as well, or uh, to dry their dishes with, out of the cotton yarns because they do absorb really well. Just keep in mind, like I said, you know, with these, is that they absorb everything, the stinky smell. So you must wash them often and you must wash them in hot water. And if you want to keep them soft, put a couple of drops of that white distilled vinegar in it just a couple of drops and the truth is I do it almost every time I do my towels and the reason that I do that I put it right up at the fabric softener in, and then I just put the the vinegar right in the same slot and the reason that I do that is because it will soften them up and it will help eliminate some of those nasty smells I mean I learned that years ago when I first got my dogs and we were potty training that what the white distilled vinegar is the best way to keep a dog from returning to its spot so that's just a little FYI my my uh, Maximo my white chihuahua he learned really really good uh, Rosie had been through kind of a because they're both rescue dogs and we got her she didn't even weigh a pound and she had a few issues and so we learned her we taught learned her <laughs> we taught her first you know on the potty pads and but she had a little bit of struggle when it came to transitioning to going potty outside she did great you know finally but the white vinegar eliminates smell i said all of that to tell you that <laughs> so if you want to use the scrubby yarn it's great they make great scrubbies but i like i said my favorite way is one strand of cotton and one strand of, of uh, scrubby yarn and just use that to scrub those dishes scrub the sink scrub the tub don't intermix them though if you use it in the toilet don't put it in the kitchen sink okay <laughs> Yuck! <laughs> and so that's my recommendation. Like I said, to bottom line it, cotton is best if you can use cotton. Scrubby is great too. And be careful where you use your acrylic yarn for those types of things. Now, another thing to remember is if you're making soap bags, I really like them made out of cotton also, but someone gave me one that was made out of acrylic yarn and I really kind of liked it because then I could hang it in the shower and it didn't collect that stink. And so I didn't have to wash it because I'll go through and just grab everything and wash all my towels and my scrubbies about once a week. Well, then I didn't have to grab that one quite as often because I use a different soap on my face than I do for the rest of my body. And I kind of like that soap bag because I could just bubble it up and wash my face real fast. So it's kind of up to you. The bottom line is be careful with acrylic yarn. It will burn and it will burn you. All right, so that's our talk for today. Make sure I covered all my notes. And remember, the last, I also want to remind you again, if you're using acrylic yarn for decorative hot pads and things like that, make sure that people that use your kitchen know the difference. 
That is very important. Good morning, Michelle. You sneaked in. Let's see if we got everybody else in here. Good morning, Sonia. Good morning, Aurora. Good morning, Sandra. Good, good morning, Trish. I'm so glad you're all here today. Let's clink in. I've got my pink cup for breast cancer awareness. Save the tatas, girls. Okay. Now, <clears throat> let's talk about a few new yarns I got this week. Now, I want to tell you all about something that I do, and I hope that you do it too. If you have a Hobby Lobby, if you have a Michaels, if you have a Joann's, every week they put out 40% off on one item. And it's a little bit frustrating if you need two or three. So what I do is I, I use it every week. And, I, and I, uh, I went to Hobby Lobby this week and I got this one. It's called Jumpin' Jelly. Look at those colors. And I have a Christmas scarf that I made, um, I think, two years ago. Yeah. And I'm going to do the video using this yarn. Isn't that awesome? And it's not traditional Christmas, but it reminds me of Christmas. And so I thought I would do it in that one. And then I went to Michael's and used the 40% off at Michael's. And I got this one. Look at those colors. Let's see. This one is called Plum Pudding. Oh, I just love that. And again, it reminded me of Christmas, even though it's not the traditional Christmas colors. So... What you need to do if you need yarn and you want to try some of these cakes, because they're not cheap. This one's $9.99. This one, I think, was $6.99. Use the 40% off coupon every week. Now, one thing to remember about Joann's. Now, my Joann's, it, these two are like right down the street from me. They're like, I'm there, they call me the yarn lady because I'm there so often. But the, uh, the Joann's isn't. It's about 15 miles away. And I know that's close compared to a lot of people, but I don't go as often. And so Joann's will take other stores coupons and you can pile them up. So keep that in mind. And Joann has a great selection of yarn. As a matter of fact, every time we go, I live in Parker and uh, south of Denver. And the other town is called Aurora that's like right up around the corner. And that's where the Joann's is. And so every time we go up there to do something, I try to swing by Joann's just to go in and squeeze the yarn. <laughs> Remember, the best way to get over depression is to go in and sniff and squeeze the yarn, okay? And I'm not joking. I'm serious. All right, so that's the new yarn I found this week. And I am totally in love with the cakes. This one, oh, by the way, some of them have the abrupt color changes. This one doesn't. It's a little more blended, where this one is the abrupt color changes. A lot of people hate those abrupt color changes. I love them. I think they're adorable, and I think they're fun. All right, so let's talk about a couple of new patterns real quick that we have going on this week. Now, the first one I want to show you is this one. Now I had this hanging up in my yarn room back behind me for a while and I designed this pattern last summer. It's super duper easy. It's all stitched in double crochets and I have not done the video for this one yet it's it's the it, but it is a free crochet pattern on my blog and you can find it on Ravelry or you can just click over to poshpoochdesigns.com and just look in the free pattern list it's in there and it's a super duper easy pattern and if you've never followed a pattern where there's uh, color changes. I've got also on that blog um, how to change colors to make it look neat and tidy. Okay, and so that's something that I did this last week. And remember, I told you I've got a bunch of new stuff coming because during the time when I was having my surgeries, I did a lot of designing. So I've got I had a bunch of stuff going on in my head. So I've got a bunch of new stuff coming out for you. All right, now remember. The other thing is each month we're putting out a six inch square and the inspiration for that square is the month's birthstone and this month's birthstone is the rose quartz and so for October this is the one there we go that we did it's got a rose a little bit of green some white and a rose trim and we did the this on this video it is a video there's also a written pattern and a photo tutorial, which I like to do when I do the monthly squares. Now, if you don't know what we're doing with the monthly squares, each month, like I said, I designed a six inch square. And then at the end of the year, we'll have 12 squares. Then in January, I've got a really fun project we're going to do together. And I've already got mine started. Oh, I just love how it's going to turn out. 
And we're going to learn more than just crochet with that project. So keep that in mind. And I'll make sure in December to give you the supply list so that you'll know what we're doing. And remember, it's not a blanket. It's not a, it's not a hat. And it's not a scarf. It's something different. <laughs> and I think you're really going to like it. So anyway, that's what we had going on this week at Posh Pooch Designs. I hope that everything worked out great for you. Here, let me put you over and let, let you say hello to my puppies. Maximo and Rosie. Oh, look at them. There they are. Say hello. They're like, leave me alone. <laughs> so anyway, that's Max and Rosie over there sleeping it away. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in today. I hope you learned something about which yarns to use for scrubbies and things. And to remember, the bottom line is be careful with acrylic in the kitchen, okay? Because it will burn you and it will burn your kids and your countertops. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to let you go. I'm going to leave it on the top cam. Check your tatas. Have your friend or your partner check your tatas because it's very important. This is a great cause to me because my mother passed away from breast cancer. And so that's what I'm going to leave you with. Save the tatas, and we'll see you next week. Thanks for tuning in.